Hi YouTube, this is uh, John, the creator of Stupid Robot Fighting League. Um, if you're not familiar with Stupid Robot Fighting League, uh, please view our channel trailer and um, it will uh, clarify some things for you. But um, Stupid Robot Fighting League is a manually controlled robot fighting league. Okay, so there's no robotics, it's just all manpower and uh, it's one junk robot versus another junk robot in a frame but there's a whole lot more to it than that and uh, just have a look at the channel trailer and that will probably give you a good idea of what you can what you can expect from this craziness what i want to give you is a heads up this is going to be long-winded it's going to be a long video um, and it's going to be a fair amount of work on my part but what we're going to do is we are going to talk about the plan for the show of Stupid Robot Fighting League. What we're looking to do is have a live YouTube channel. And uh, it will uh, have one team versus the other with a live audience. And then uh, what will happen is that um, you know the, the teams will challenge, uh, they'll build, fight, and uh, that will be show over. But there's a whole lot more to it than that. So what I'm going to do is go through uh, what the document that's uh, on the website, stupidrobotfightingleague.com. And what we're going to do is basically go through the document almost word for word. Um, it's, this is sort of for the people who don't like reading so much or their brain switches off. They prefer to hear someone talk through it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off at the start of the document. And uh, I'm pretty much going to read it to you, sort of. So, buckle up. This is going to get weird. And it is going to get weird. Uh, welcome to the rather lengthy description of what is the Stupid Robot Fighting League, or for short, SRFL. This may be a bit off beat. I make no apology for this fact. I find that if I make something a little strange, it will attract people that I want to be around. And this is something that I learned from, oh, I can't remember his name, but um, it's the guy Will, Will B, I think. If you look up Will B on YouTube, um, he created a game called Soda Drinker Pro. Look up Soda Drinker Pro, and uh, I watched one of his uh, interviews that he had, and um, he had it down pat. The, the, the game is quite strange. Um, but it attracts the kind of people that he wants to be around. And this is what Stupid Robot Fighting is for me. Stupid Robot Fighting League is you wreck things, you build things, you wreck things, and you have a really good laugh. And that's what I like to do. So that will hopefully attract the people that I want to be around. So firstly, uh, Stupid Robot Fighting League has a passionately defended family-friendly culture. We will do uh, all we can in our power to keep it that way. Uh, it will only, oh sorry, it not only makes moral sense, but it makes business sense as well. As our format will attract more viewers, it will give us more opportunity to advertise. And I am looking to pay the bills through this. Okay, so um, if you have, I, I don't think I have to explain this to you, but let's do it anyway. If we have a something that only appeals to adults and because of the language and the subject matter it, we can only show it to adults then obviously we don't have the uh, ability to advertise to children but if we uh, control what we say and do and keep everything fun crazy but family friendly then you know it's a no-brainer we can have a larger audience uh, I personally, I have two children, and I want to uh, do things that also appeal to them. Uh, if you didn't notice, um, if you've had children or seen children, they like to wreck things as well. Stupid Robot Fighting League is a ridiculous idea birthed from a love of shows like Robot Wars and Junkyard Challenge. I love the drama and tension of wrecking stuff, and having to make a functioning thing in a given time limit. So there's always tension, you know, tension getting the things done in time. The one thing they 
both lack is accessibility. Now, with robot, uh, stupid robot fighting league, the thing is that you are given a pile of junk, and all you have to do is drill holes and wire stuff together so it fits in a frame. All you need to do is drill and wire, and then decorate it. You know, that's part of the show. So that means that you have, you almost can do it with no skill at all, you know. Maybe a little drill skill, and that's about it, really. Um, so it's accessible to a larger group of people who want to participate. When I say this, I mean something that everyday people can do. Both shows require prowess in either robotics or engineering. Not a skill that anywhere everybody has. Uh, well, what if we dumbed, uh, what if we dumbed down the idea a bit? How about a whole lot? If I uh, sorry. If you can get a sniff of the direction that I'm heading in, great. So I kind of already explained that at the start, that uh, stupid robot fighting is about something that a lot of people can do. They don't need a heap of skill. So um, the document goes on to the simple short version. Um, I'll start off with a simple bullet point list. This will have no meat in it, but will give you a very rough idea. It will be formatted as if you were watching the live YouTube show. So it's just boom, 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 boom. Okay, so here we go. So we have the show starts and then the uh, introductions of the two teams of three members. Okay, we'll probably go into more detail uh, in the later paragraphs. The robot build starts and they have a two hour time limit to build their robot out of junk that they've been given. Now the teams trade home baking for junk from the audience. This is where audience participation comes in. I will go into more detail uh, concerning this in the um, this section uh, titled Bribery and Corruption. It, it's, it, it's a thing. One team member records their promo. Now if you remember in the 80s wrestling, 80s pro wrestling, um, the people would, uh, the wrestler would uh, grab the microphone and eye the camera as if they were talking to their opponent and sort of trash talking them a bit. Well, that's going to be a thing in the show as well, previous to the fight. Okay. And then the uh, YouTube audience votes on the best promo and then the robot build finishes. And then the teams are given 30 minutes uh, to mount their robot in a frame, like a dummy frame, and uh, they sort of get a bit of practice time with it as well. And the robots are mounted inside the, the octagon, and if you haven't seen the octagon, you're, you're really in the wrong place. Go look at the, um, the channel trailer, okay? And then the fight starts. Now the fights will be three minutes, sorry, three rounds of two minutes each, and each round has begun with a monologue from each of the fighters. So the camera goes to the fighter and they, they say a monologue, like a bit like um, Street Fighter 2 or Tekken. So those two, um, you know, they have the one liner that comes out. But the interesting thing is, is that the monologue is actually written by the opposing team member. So you can actually get some, some pretty crazy things uh, said by each person. But they have to say it in a, a sort of in a threatening way as if they were talking to their opponent. So it's going to be pretty mixed up, pretty weird. Um, okay, so we've got the monologue. And during the fight, the penalty uh, chair headshots are administered. Another homage to the, uh, to the wrestling. Okay, uh, the uh, wrestlers now and then would pull a collapsible chair out and hit their opponent. Um, so that's an homage to that. And uh, except for the votes for how good your... Um, your promo was if your promo was good um, and it got voted up uh, versus the other teams then s someone from the audience can come in and actually wallop the opponent's robot in the head um, giving you an extra shot in there so it could be handy it could be the difference between the robot falling apart and not um, and the fight stops after that and uh, the, the pedometer count is recorded this is something I haven't talked about but uh, what I wanted to do 
was create the simplest method for uh, counting a uh, how many shots your robot has been taken in the head and so I thought uh, pedometer because a pedometer will sit on the back of the robot's head and every time it gets a jolt basically it goes up by one so um, I, I haven't yet tested those out but uh, that's that'll be part of the thing that I do next is to get pedometers and see how they perform getting jolted each time by getting uh, smacks in the head of the robot so uh, the pedometer uh, count is recorded and the uh, bribes are taken into account so uh, with the bribes um, I'll go into more detail but it's actually uh, bribe the only currency for bribery uh, in stupid robot fighting is uh, home baking and the teams have to have done this home baking so if it's lousy it's a pretty low value currency but if their home baking is amazing they could be able to perform some pretty um, uh, pretty good cloak and dagger stuff but uh, that, that I'll share more on that later and then after that we have our end comments and drama and that should be enough to pull it out into about a half hour show um, so that is if you stop there if you stop the video you'll get a, a bit of a, a flavor of what I'm talking about but there's a whole lot more to it than that so what we're doing is we're going to talk about the teams okay each team will have three people uh, in its current form it would be good to um, to have a person that is uh, good at building things a person that is good at decorating things and a person that is good at acting okay so these are three very useful strengths in stupid robot fighting um, and it could be the difference between winning and losing and uh, we will cover more of this later now uh, let's go down to the robots uh, the robots are made from junk old broken stuff each item will be given um, will be given each of the items will be given to a team in a big fridge box so each one gets a fridge box each team um, it could have uh, old toys electronic gadgets or uh, op shop purchases wood scraps etc the robots are to be humanoid in form and need to follow a basic size and weight range uh, if it's too heavy um, the the bot will be a possible impossible to move around and uh, all external or well, this is my one of my favorite things all external uh, decorations are to be attached by hot glue so um, this is to make sure that the TV will be exciting or the viewing will be exciting because um, things will be flying off left right and center um, hot glue is not really intended to hold um, things on metal or, or plastic sort of externally you know just like it's stuck like blue tech or something like that so things will be flying off left right and center and hopefully that'll make for very good uh, very dramatic viewing the robots are operated by poles okay so you need to go back to the um, what's it called you need to go back to the uh, trailer the channel trailer and you'll see how they're controlled okay the operator sits outside the octagon pushing uh, and pu uh, pulling on the poles and it's more like a puppet but it's uh, more violent each robot has a pedometer attached to the back of its head and that's what we talked about uh, earlier on and uh, this is a simple method of counting blows to the head these are recorded at the end of the fight uh, if something falls off the operator can no longer use that limb and um, the wire that we're using obviously we're using it outside of its intended purpose so we get fairly regular breakages and um, that's what we're after we don't want to have these completely indestructible robots and have two guys just popping each other just constantly we're after a bit of a bit of drama and that kind of thing so um, if the head detaches then that uh, that is counted as a knockout so I've been fighting uh, my brother-in-law Pete and uh, my robot uh, neck detached and everything just flopped to the ground now that's counted as a knockout but what we did was we went to the next round so obviously he won that round and um, so we just wired it back up and I was back fighting but he won that round that round was his so we had two more rounds which um, oh, the anyway I won two rounds he won one and that means that um, I actually won the the whole fight itself 
Now we're talking about the building phase. Okay. Uh, the teams uh, are sectioned off so they can't see each other. So, you know, some sort of wall. Uh, the two teams get tools and safety gear. Uh, they are also given a thick cardboard template so they can get a rough idea of the size the robot needs to be. Now, I've just built a CAN robot, a CAN based robot, and it was very, very useful. I managed to get the robot to the uh, quite an ideal height. Um, they are each given a big fridge, big uh, fridge box full of junk. They are required to strip off what they need and attach all of the parts in a sturdy yet flexible manner. And I really want to um, uh, emphasise flexible because when you're going like this, you don't want it jamming up. Um, it's something to, to keep in mind. Nearing the end of the building phase, the actor of the team, as I was talking about, one of the roles. Uh, is required to shoot their pre-fight promo, which is quite important. The promo is a video recording of the actor of the team eyeing up the video camera, pretending they are talking to the opposing team member. This was a classic part of 80s and 90s pro wrestling. Instead of breathing out threats to their enemy, they have to rehearse a given script. Now this will be voted on by um, YouTube viewers. Okay, uh, This script is provided by fans. They uh, will be voted on by the live YouTube audience. The weirder the better, for instance, the promo script could be someone's shopping list or a four-year-old's poem written at kindergarten. Whatever it is, the actor has to speak it out in a threatening manner. So it could be something really cute, but they have to say it like it's something mean. Um, whoever pulls it off best will get the most votes. If you get the most votes, then the team's uh, robot gets a smack in the head by the penalty chair. I'm not exactly sure how that will be administered during the fight, but believe me, it will be administered. Okay, now we're on to the practice phase. Each team is provided 30 minutes and a frame to practice fighting with their robots versus a dummy. So something stationary and they can practice their moves. Um, and so they get their dummy moves sorted out and pull some moves together. Now, th this is something that I think is quite important. The team must invent and name three moves. Now, if you remember uh, Street Fighter 2, you know, I think it was Ryu, and he hit his Ah Yugen move or the uh, Sonic Boom. Uh, I don't know if it was his or not, but moves like that that you call them out and do them. It's about the drama. It's about the um, having your robot, you know, do specific moves that people can recognize. You know, getting a bit creative. Um, so during the fight, the operator must call out the name of the move while performing it for bonuses during judging. Okay, so those will be taken into account. Uh, it is an homage to Street Fighter, as I said. Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about. So Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, uh, look it up. The robot must also be weighed for final judging. So you've got parts on your robot attached and uh, you'll also be scored on how much your robot weighs or how much weight it lost during the fight. Things could fall off, your decorations and stuff like that. Uh, you could lose an arm at the end of the last round and so your, your weight difference uh, will be judged um, against the other robots so if they've lost nothing and you've lost a whole lot then that that section of judging you have lost that now the fight going on to the fight uh, the teams must hang their robot in the octagon frame ready to fight the pedometers will be attached I'm yet to work out how exactly uh, once the referee and judges are happy it's time to get it on yeah the fight is three rounds of two minutes. Each round has a two minute break in between for the teams to try to reattach any loose parts. If an arm has fallen off, if a leg has fallen off or anything like that, they are welcome to within that two minute time frame to try and reattach it again. Um, we've done some testing and uh, that's worked out really well. We haven't, because we're testing, we haven't done the two minute limit and we helped each other. But um, it worked out quite well because there's no point in having that disadvantage all the way through the rounds. It, um, it, it, it's not much fun. Right. Each round begins with a monologue. The operator has to say in a threatening manner to the opposing robot operator. Now the twist with this one is it's a little different to the promo. 
is that the monologue is written by the other team. So if I was a, a competitor, I would have to say whatever it is they wrote in a threatening manner, and it could, it, it could be pretty funny. The idea is to have a laugh, you know, not to insult people, but to have a good laugh. So um, anyway, um, the fight is stopped when either the timer has run out for the three rounds or one of the robot's heads has been removed from its body, which I've seen a couple of times now. It's pretty funny. Uh, should it come down to a judge's decision, then the winner is decided on the following. And here we go. Total headshots counted by the pedometer. I don't need to explain that. Total special moves performed and landed must be uh, called uh, while performing the actual maneuver. Okay. The starting weight of the robot and the finishing weight of the robot, how many parts you have lost. The vote results from the live YouTube audience for each round start monologue. So you get points for um, the quality of your monologue and uh, any perks gained through bribery. And this is explained below. I talked about it a little while ago. Okay, so bribery, this is the new section, bribery and corruption. To thicken the plot, Stupid Robot Fighting League encourages bribery and corruption, but surrounded by two immovable rules. All bribery and corruption transactions must be made on camera. This is to thicken the plot of the show. The only accepted currency to bribe anyone is with home baking. Yes, you heard right. Uh, we'll talk about home baking in a little bit. Uh, team sponsorship. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting, okay? <clears throat> um, Stupid Robot Fighting encourages each team to get their own sponsorship, which is normal for sports. Uh, there is no cap on how much they can earn, and during the show each team can promote their sponsor as much as they like they can get ridiculous about it okay if the team members are more dramatic or interesting then they will draw the camera to themselves thus getting more bang for their sponsor's dollar okay so if you put on a good show you know you don't have to necessarily win but if you put on a good show then this is where you can get more value for your sponsor okay uh, here are the avenues the teams may use to promote their sponsor. Uh, wearing their sponsor's product or branded apparel, talking about their sponsors uh, while on camera. As I said, you can get ridiculous about this. Working sponsor's name into monologues. So you can actually get your opposing team to shop your sponsor if you wanted. But, you know, you've, you've got to be sensible. Uh, working, uh, decorating a robot with sponsor's logo more than happy to. Uh, you can't really paint it on because within your two hours your paint won't dry. Uh, it's important that each team sponsors understand how the culture of stupid robot fighting works. Two teams may support competing brands, okay? So they, your sponsor has to know this, that you know you could have their, your sponsor's enemy on the same show. Uh, that's just the way things are. They have to swallow that. It's the team's responsibility to be honest. If they are not, they are on their own. It's it's their problem, okay? If, you, if you're not being open and honest with your sponsor, your problem. Vlogging. Mm. Alongside the show, we will be running a vlog covering everything else concerning the show. Now the teams will be encouraged to do the same. Start your own channel, start your own vlog. Uh, this is another opportunity to develop advertising revenue. So if you're interesting, people will want to watch, and then you can shop sponsors again, okay? Your, your own show. Um, if the show and teams link to each other, then the audience will expand exponentially, okay? So if one channel points to another channel, and then points to another channel, you know, you don't have to be enemies. You can be good mates and come and have a have a big rumble, shop your sponsors, everyone goes home paid. Okay, that's what we're after. Okay, uh, part of the vlogging will be also to cover the subplot of home baking. Uh, the process and the chance to share recipes or even highlight a cookbook or well-known chefs called in to help the teams with their baking skills. So you can actually uh, yeah, have a subplot of home baking, okay? Because home baking is actually quite important. Okay, now the end. 
uh, this is the end of the show. Okay, the finish of the episode will wrap up uh, of the sorry will will be a wrap up of the build and fight by the commentators. Some interviews with the winners and losers, and some announcements concerning future events. Now, in conclusion, this is more of an, an address to the person reading the document, but I'll read it anyway. If you read this far, I figure you must be quite interested. If you've watched a video this long, you must be the same. Uh, you then are the type of people that I am looking for to be part of this family fun crazy thing that is Stupid Robot Fighting League. Please get in touch. This is early in the game. Those who get in early reap the biggest rewards. Thanks, John Espen, creator of Stupid Robot Fighting League. So I'm probably going to have to chop this up in three parts. But I am pretty excited about it. Um, I am looking forward to the future concerning this. And if you want to be part of that future, then please get in contact with me nice and early. We're about to start rolling out shows within a month or so, I would I guess. Um, the, the start format will probably be quite rough and partially disorganized. But we will get more streamlined as we go. So that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the ring.